So we got a 16 by 25 slab we're doing this morning. It's eight inches thick. They wanted to match top of slab to the top of that floor in there. So we had it for a six inch slab, then we had to raise it up two inches to match that. We're using this new fiber, glass fiber rebar this, today in this slab. This will be the first time we're using this. So this is a number three bar, and this is equivalent in strength to number four steel bar. And it's, it's really, really light. So we're gonna start using more of this stuff. Let me know, let me know down in the comments how many of you guys use this fiberglass rebar. Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how we pour and finish this 16 by 25 shed slab. This slab could also be used for like a single bay garage. But these people here hired us to pour this slab to build a shed on. Now, it was supposed to be a six inch slab. And then when we showed up here and we started, we had it all formed up, all set to grade. The building manager came out and said, wait, 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 this, the code enforcement says this has to be an eight inch thick slab. So, and we have to match the top of that floor over there, like I showed you in the beginning of the video. So, I mean, that's no, no big problem. I just told him, I go, well, the people that hired us, the builder that hired us to do the slab only told us a six inch slab. So that's why we brought two by sixes. And I only priced it as a six inch slab. So I go, that's fine. We can make it eight inches, no problem. We can just add on to the top of the two by sixes, which is what you saw, what you see right there is what we did. Um, he'll just have to pay for the extra concrete, the extra two inches of concrete, which he did, no problem. But I think it's really, honestly, it's, it's quite overkill for a shed, eight inches thick. We don't even make garage slabs around here eight inches thick for people to drive cars on. So kind of overkill. I think the city's kind of making them waste some money just by making it eight inches thick. It had a good gravel base under it. Whoever, I didn't do the gravel base. I didn't hire the people to do the gravel base. That was all done when we showed up. But whoever did it did a pretty good job. They... They grubbed out all the loam and the in the soil that was there and put down about a foot of really good compacted gravel. Had it nice and flat for us. Um, so all we had to do was basically set our forms up, set them to grade, and, and we were off and running. Now, we had to put a vapor barrier under this shed. I don't know why we had to do that either. I don't think that was really all that necessary, but it's not a big deal. So we put a six mil vapor barrier under there, and then we tied that new fiber rebar in there. That was the, this is the first job we're using that fiber rebar on. What's pretty cool about that is it the people we buy it off from, it comes in bundles of 25. So there's 25 of them that are 20 feet long. And if you're using typical 3-8 rebar, that's the steel rebar, you can't pick up 25 of those at a time. Well, with these, you could you could easily pick up two of those 25-foot bundles that are 20 feet long, one person, and carry them around. They're that light, and they're stronger. So, um, definitely the way I think we're going to start going with this. You can see we're putting having to put a few kickers in as we're pouring this because it's 8 inches thick. They didn't really leave, leave us a lot of gravel to backfill with. So we're just putting kickers in as we need them to keep the forms nice and straight. I'm going around checking our string line, making sure everything stays nice and straight. This took about 10 and a half yards of concrete for this. It figured at six inches, you know, it was in the seven and a half, eight yard range. So had to had to get them for another three yards of concrete on this. I'm going to get this bolt loaded here, and then we're going to we'll put in some anchor bolts, and then we'll, we got to let it sit for a minute. And then I'm going to show you how we power trial. We ended up power trialing this really nice and smooth, and we saw cut it too. We put some saw cuts in for joints to help control the cracks. But this stuff bolt loaded is really nice. This this mix we use it's a 3500 psi mix. It's got uh, between a mid and a high range water reducer in it, so it lets that allows us to pour a nice loose slump so it consolidates really well. It screeds really easy. It makes it easy bowl floating. And it helps minimize the bleed water. I mean, it doesn't, when you pour on plastic, you always get some bleed water that rises to the surface, it seems like. 
especially if you've got a shaded area. You can see part of this is in the shade. So we've got to deal with the bleed water a little bit. You can see the surface, it's ready. I mean, when you can walk on it and only sink down maybe an eighth of an inch or, or even less, it's ready to float. But when you have that bleed water on there, even though you, you try to let all of it dry up, or you squeegee it off if it doesn't want to dry up you still have the moist surface so you got to get the bull float lines out and part of that part of power troweling is also leveling that surface crossing your paths as you power trowel you can you'll see see that here as we move forward but so you got to make sure you don't let it get too hard before you get on it the first time so eric's getting on it right about at the right time here we call this floating we got float blades on our finished blades are like a, a bigger blade that slides on over the finished blades on this trowel. They just help, they help flatten out the surface a little better. They help bring up the cream and the paste a little better on this first hit. Then we'll kick them off and we'll use the finished blades. But So Eric's going to go over it and you can kind of see the pattern he's using. And I believe what he'll end up doing is he'll just, he'll just go over it and give it a few minutes and then he'll cross this pattern 90 degrees. And keep the full blades on for that second hit and it's going to end up being nice and tight you'll see here in a second how it looks when he kicks those blades off you could finish a slab like this by hand too if you wanted to but this was it was 90 degrees out today it was hot out in the sun there so he's he actually hit that twice you can see how he crossed his pattern and went the other way and you can see how nice and tight that ended up being so right now he's he's got it up on the crane he's pulling those blades off and he's kind of cleaning off the trowel from a little bit of concrete slurry that gets on it before he starts using the finished blades so he'll get that cleaned off he'll drop it right back down in a matter of you know five minutes and then he'll just start hitting this again Luke's going around it with a hand trowel buzzing all the edges you can see all the anchor bolts we had to put in those are stainless steel anchor bolts too. They don't they don't rust. Having that crane makes using a power trowel like this pretty easy. We can lift. I mean that power trowel right there is about 200 pounds, so you could use that for anything. You know, generators. You could use it for compactors, whatever, whatever you use in the back of your truck that isn't too too heavy. Now that he's got that down, he'll start that right back up and just keep going over it. Almost, really, really, almost until it's done. It's going to dry that fast. It'll probably take him another, oh, I don't know, three passes with this as, he's, as he goes to finish this off. It's going to end up being finished nice and smooth. They wanted this just as smooth as we could possibly get it with a power trial. So that's what we're going to give him here today. So Eric's kind of taking out his marks there from, from picking that up and dropping it back down. And then he'll jump right on it and hit it with the power trowel. And he's going to cross that pattern again, which is pretty typical of the way we finish concrete. It just helps, it helps keep the slab surface flat and level. If you keep going the same way with the power trowel, you're going to have these little uh, rows, uh, what I call them, you know. The power trowel has a slight bevel to it, the base of the power trowel. So if you just keep going the same way, then you're gonna have those those rows in the concrete, slight bevels here and there in high spots, and you don't really want that. It takes him, you know, it probably takes him two to three minutes to hit that entire surface right there with the power trowel. He's not, he's not having to hurry or nothing, but he's, He's just moving on, at, moving along at a steady pace. You can see that's about the pace right there he goes. If he sees a little hole or what we call a little ratty spot, then he'll go back and fill that in and make sure it's all smoothed out. Not looking to finish the slab uh, in one pass. I mean, it takes multiple passes. It takes So he probably gave it five minutes right there, shut it off, and then he's back on it again. And, as the surface dries in the sun, as it cures out and dries, we call it drying. Everybody else, I guess you call it curing, but same, just a chemical process. Uh, as it cures out, it gets smoother and smoother as you go over it. So now you can see he's crossing that pattern again. 
it's setting so fast you can see Luke's actually stripping some of the forms so we don't have to come back the next day and get our forms because we do so many floors and slabs a week uh, it makes it difficult to get back to jobs the next day sometimes and a lot of times these guys want to start framing within a day or two so we like to get our stuff out of the way and just move on to the next job but usually as fast as we can it doesn't hurt anything the slabs almost rock hard by now so it's perfectly fine to strip the same day if that's what you have to do so this is the second time with the finished blades Eric's gonna hit it one more time you're gonna see the slab surface start to turn a little bit black and that's that's when it's done it's just not gonna get any smoother than that and you start to see it turning we call it shining out here, but it, it starts to look a little bit black. You can start to see it right there a little bit. The back half where he's headed to right now is actually in the sun a little bit longer than this part right here. This part was shaded by the, there's a building off to the right. So early in the morning it was shaded a little bit. That's why it hasn't blackened out quite as much. But you can start to see it shine right now. I mean, that's done. You, you can't get that any smoother than that with a power trial right there. So. That's how we pour, you know, we form, pour, and finish a uh, concrete shed slab, guys. So, again, thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, it's all about concrete work. Please hit the subscribe button. If you like these kind of videos, hit like, and I'll make more of them. And we'll see you on the next one, guys.